Guys, Lego Master Reviews here, and today we're doing a review on set 76261, the Spider-Man Final Battle. This set has 900 pieces and will retail for $110 in the US. Um, this set is newly released, and obviously it's based off the Final Battle of Spider-Man No Way Home. You get the three Spider-Men included, Green Goblin, MJ, Ned, Doc Ock, Doctor Strange, and Electro, as well as like a build all around like the entire like, Statue of Liberty head of Sandman. But there's no Lizard included, unfortunately. But that being said, let's turn right into it. And here you have Tom Holland's Spider-Man. The box just calls him Spider-Man, but as you can see, it looks great. His accessories are like the box that sends all the villains home. And as you can see, it's like the Minecraft heads that um, LEGO uses in all like the Minecraft sets. And it's also all the same sticker on each side. But I really like this accessory, and it's a really great inclusion in the set. He also includes this web accessory, which is a bit oversized, but still, I really like that, and it's pretty cool for the set. Moving those to the side, here is the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Absolutely love this minifigure. He's not exclusive to the set, and I did already have him, but mine is trying to get worn out. So I am glad to have a new one now. The head print is awesome. I know some people really don't like this head print, but personally, I think it looks great. The torso print is super accurate, and there's some back torso printing as well as those back head printing. He also has dual molded legs with printing on them, which I really like. Overall, this is a great minifigure. He also includes a double head, so as you can see here, it's not very accurate whatsoever. It's like a dark brown hair piece, but then this face is just so inaccurate. It does have a second facial expression, as you can see. But yeah, not a fan of the face whatsoever. Lego really dropped the ball with the face. I'm not a fan of it, but it looks great with the mask. Here we have Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, or the Amazing Spider-Man as the box calls on, and my personal favorite minifigure of the set. He looks absolutely incredible. His accessories are these little web blasters, which you just kind of hold it down when you fire off. They're pretty ugly though, so I'm gonna leave it off them for now. But as you can see, that face print is just so accurate. It looks so great, I love it so much. And as you can see, the torso print is also super detailed. And I'm flipping around, he also has an incredibly detailed back torso print. It's just so accurate. And then he has dual molded legs, which I really appreciate. There's no printing on them, but I, the dual mold legs still look great in them, I really like that. He doesn't have arm printing either, but I made an upgrade to this minifigure, so you can go check that out on my channel. But overall, I really like this minifigure. He also includes a second um, face, which is definitely not as bad as the um, Tom Holland Spider-Man face, as you can see. I think it's actually pretty accurate. This hair is perfect, and flipping the head around, I actually think the facial expression looks a lot like Andrew Garfield, maybe in like his younger years, but it, I don't think it's bad. It's definitely the best unmasked face included in the set. So I don't hate that one as much, but it definitely just something to display with the mask for sure. And here we have Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, or the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man as the box calls him. He looks absolutely great as well. That face print is so accurate. Love the torso print flipping around. You can also see it's a super detailed back print. It also has dual molded legs, the same one as Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, but I think it still looks great. And no arm printing again, but it's, I don't think it looks terrible at all. His accessories just like this oversized web as well, but I think it's actually pretty cool for the most part. And yeah, he also includes a unmasked face for any of you wondering. Um, it's terrible though. It's like the uh, young Han Solo face, I believe. It has this like light brown hair. Like the hair is not inaccurate, but the face is absolutely terrible. It just looks way like younger than, it's just not even accurate even if it was. Like it doesn't even look like a young Tommy Maguire from like the original film. So I really don't get why they included this face. This, they really just didn't even try with the unmasked face for the set. But the uh, masked print looks so great and I love this minifigure so much. And here is the Green Goblin minifigure of the set. As you can see, it looks absolutely great. My only really complaint with him is that he has zero leg printing whatsoever, so that kind of sucks. But he has the dark brown like hair that Han Solo originally like used, so it's like his hair piece instead of the light brown, it's the dark brown. So I really like that. Um, the face is really great with like the goggles on the one side and flipping it around here. You can see as like this, that's just so accurate to Willem Dafoe. They really capture the likeness there. I love that so much. I prefer with the goggles just because I just play with the glider in the set, which is also included. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. But looking at his torso now, look how accurate that is. I'll remove his accessories for a second here. That is a, such an accurate torso with the kind of like purple like cape and stuff. And all the detail underneath. And he has a back torso print as well with like some metal and just the pouches and belt. Just such an accurate minifigure. But then we move on to the legs, there's literally nothing there. But I will be upgrading this minifigure in the future, so stay tuned for that video. And he also includes these pumpkin bombs, or just like orange minifigure heads, with some translucent like green pieces on top. And I really do like this minifigure, it's part of my favorite villain minifigure of the set, just because I love Green Goblin as like a villain. So yeah, I really like this minifigure, it's super detailed. And here we have the Doc Ock minifigure of the set, and I'm really mixed on this minifigure just because the, in the movie, his trench coat is clearly green, and I just don't get why it's not green. I think they're basing off concept art still, which I'll put up on the screen right now. But, like, in, like, when that movie's been out for two years, and you make your set two years later, 
why would you be still basing it off concept art when you have the movie out and you can see the most accurate thing? Whereas like trench coat is clearly green. I just don't get that. Like when you have the full movie out, what's the point of basing it off concept art? But I still think it looks green. In some angles, it does look green in the movie. Well, for the most part, it is green, but um, moving out of the way, I just don't think the hair piece is very accurate as well. I think it looks terrible. Like, I don't know, this dark brown, this doesn't really work. And his eyebrows are really black in the set. So like the Harry Potter hair piece on him or something would look a lot better. Well, I think the face print's actually really accurate for the most part. I'm flipping it around here has a more angry expression. I think he nailed the facial expression for sure. But like, as far as like the hair goes, I don't like it so much. Um, like the torso print's very accurate. Like if you just made it green, the torso would actually be very accurate. You know, you got the buttons, you got like the, the middle part that attaches to his tentacles on the back. I love like the turtleneck that they add in. This kind of adds like, make it look like the rest of the turtleneck there. So that's kind of cool. Um, I, and I like the legs, as you can see, that like, carry down from the torso, which is very awesome. His arms are kind of another complaint I have. I think they're just a little too short. Like, they're just not very long. Like, in the movie, they're super long. And I get it's not very practical for, like, a play set. But still, like, I don't think they're that great. But all of them have this kind of, like, articulation here. And the hand moves and just connected by this, like, little back attachment, which I believe got introduced on the Outrider minifigure. You know, it's connected by clips. And I'll show you his back printing right now moving the head and the claws here. As you can see, you get four little pores there for the actual like tentacles that he has. So that's really cool. I'm just like, great attention to detail even though you don't need back printing. I do appreciate that they added it. And overall, I think this is actually a great minifigure, just a bit inaccurate. And it's just very confusing why they based off concept art when the movie's been out for so long. And here you have the Electro minifigure, arguably the best villain minifigure of the set, just with all the detailing on him. He uses the hair from the Sam Wilson Captain America, and I think that's actually pretty accurate for his haircut in the movie. He only has this facial expression, there's no back face expression, I think that's because the hair doesn't really cover up any like facial expression if you pull it on the back. So I do get that, but the front one is actually very accurate with like the lightning effect, it looks like a star. And it, you know, you have his goatee and stuff, so I think it's actually a very accurate face print. The torso is also super accurate, you got the arc reactor there. All the detailing on him, and he actually includes the leg printing with like some pouches on there, which is actually pretty accurate to the movie too. I think he probably could have picked more detailed legs, but I honestly don't think it's that bad. At least you're getting leg printing on him. He doesn't have any arm printing, which is understandable, but still, I, I think he's pretty cool. He has these lightning accessories that you can see with like this yellowish with these clear like clip pieces, which I really like. And on the back, it's almost a little too much for me. It's just too much on it, almost. As you can see with these like big lightning pieces, which I believe are new. They might have been introduced in Ninjago, but as far as I don't think they're new. And yeah, as you can see, it's like this neck bracket here. And uh, something that really surprised me is that right here, they actually use Infinity Stone pieces, and you get an extra set um, of the Infinity Stones in the actual set, as you can see. So yeah, as you can see, that's what you get in the set. I think it was just very surprising, but I think it really works because it's like that translucent yellow, which is very accurate to like this, like everything going on in his back. So I really do like that. I just thought it was kind of a cool thing to point out. And showing you this back printing here, like moving the head and the lightning effect here. Um, you can see that he has a lot more detailing on the back as well on this attached here. You can see the yellow and the gunmetal gray and stuff, which looks great in my opinion. And putting that back on. Overall, I think this is actually a great minifigure. Um, I really don't have much complaints with them. I think that maybe the back can be a little like just catch you off guard, but when you have them like on the stand that's included in the set, it looks pretty cool. And overall, I think this is definitely the most detailed villain minifigure of the set. And here's the Doctor Strange minifigure of the set, and he's actually very inaccurate because he this is like his multiverse of madness appearance. And um, in the movie, it's clearly like the what he looks like in previous movies. So I don't get why we got like the multiverse of madness minifigure. My only guess is that this is the only one Doctor Strange minifigure that's still in production. So they just wanted to do the only one to be cheap and not make a new print or anything or just include old ones. So that's very cheap on Lego's part in my opinion. Um, but you get some great hair printing as you can see with the gray. Face is also super accurate. He comes with that rubbery cape that got introduced last year and I think it actually looks pretty good. Um, the torso print's also very great as you can see. Again, it's not accurate, but if we're just basing it off like the Multiverse of Madness strange, I think it's pretty good. And the back printing there is pretty accurate, as you can see. I also really like the leg printing, but again, I just don't get why we couldn't have gotten an actual, like, accurate torso print. It also includes these accessories with, like, it's supposed to be, like, the kind of, like, sorcery shields, I imagine, which is pretty cool. And also, the cape can be put on Ned to represent the scene where the, like, the Cloak of Levitation saves Ned, which is pretty cool. Overall, I just think it's actually not very accurate to the movie because it's his multiverse of madness appearance, but it's still cool to get a Doctor Strange minifigure. And here we have the Ned minifigure, and honestly, I don't think this one's very accurate as, like, as well. Um, like, the hair is pretty accurate, I think, and the face print's also brand new, which is cool. And I actually think the face is very accurate. But as far as, like, the torso goes, this jacket is clearly blue in the movie. So I don't get why we made it, like, a, a red jacket, and he also has yellow arms, which I'm pretty sure the yellow arms are accurate. 
but like the torso should be a blue torso because he had a blue jacket in the movie so i just don't get what they're even thinking there and he has some plain legs which i don't like really needed that much leg detailing but they're like in this like kind of bluish gray color and yeah he's not an incredible minifigure again he has two facial expressions that look great and the only thing you really have to do is just change out the torso to make him accurate. I just don't really get why we couldn't have gone accurate in that when the movie's been out for two years. And here we have the MJ minifigure, the last minifigure of the set. And I honestly don't think she's that bad. The hair piece isn't very accurate. Um, it's just kind of too bushy. Like in the final like battle in the way home, she has more of like a ponytail. So I don't quite get why they included that hair piece. But the face is pretty accurate, I think. Like the raised eyebrow there. And flipping the head around, she has more like a happy expression. She has a great torso print, as you can see, even though that's not even very accurate. Like, it is stripes, but it's just different colors. But it is a new torso print, so why would you create a new torso print and make it inaccurate? I just find it really confusing. I just don't quite get why. If you're going out of the way to make a new torso print, why would you not make it accurate? But there's also a printing on the back, which is very nice. You can kind of see the shirt's a bit wrinkled there. And she just includes plain black legs, which again, I don't like that she needs that much late detailing. But still, it's a great minifigure, and I'm glad they at least gave us a new torso print, but I just don't get why they couldn't have made that accurate. Now that we've taken a look at all the minifigures, let's take a look at the main builds of the set. So first off, before we jump into the actual Statue of Liberty head, I just want to show you the Green Goblin Glider here, as you can see. You get lots of great detailing with the purple slopes and everything, and like the spikes on the edges. You get some like flames in the back, which is very awesome. And placing the Green Goblin minifigure on there. He looks absolutely great on there, in my opinion. I think that that's just so awesome, like placing him on these like clip pieces is so cool and having like fly around and stuff and I actually think it's a very accurate build and it is really cool as inclusion to the set and I really appreciate how they've included that but now let's jump into the main build. One thing I found very interesting about the Statue of Liberty head is actually that it's like the exact same like model from the Welcome to Apocalypse Burger so they put in this copper color to be more accurate to the movie and it's just very weird how they like took that like exact model but it is very accurate so I do get why they did that. But as you can see, moving on to like the facial details, you can see the nose and like the eyebrows made of hot dog pieces, which I thought was funny. Um, as you can see, you get like those slope pieces look like the eyes, you get like mouth detail on the chin there. So I think they did a good job with that and like more of just like more detailing and sculpting there. You can see those very awesome stickers right there, as you can see. It's all the, like the screwing, like the everything about it looks awesome, you know, with the nails and like this looks great. I like all the detailing added there, and they're actually just connected by these clip pieces. And you can see the sand inside, which we'll dive into that little um, play feature there in a second. But I still think it looks great, as you can see. And moving it around, you get more detailing and just sculpting on there. You can see here the hair and um, zooming out a bit. You can see like the crown on like the bill. It's just very awesome, as you can see. And again, you get more hair on that side. And one of my main like favorite features of the set is you can actually pull this down. You can see the Sanctum Sanctorum in there. It's actually the UCS version of the Sanctum Sanctorum. And like as you can see, there's also like cracks in the sky from like the multiverse, like like cracking. So I like really like that. As you can see, there's like a lot of detail. It's not like any like particular character you can see in there, but it's still this very cool like like the purple cracking. And it also includes a um, like, like a it's like a Doctor Strange portal around it, which is very awesome. Like a cool detail. I mean, so you can put a mini figure there if you'd like. So that's pretty awesome. And again, there's a feature up here. We'll dive into that right now. Like I was saying, there is a play feature on here, and not really a play feature, just like a cool little like detail. I'm um, taking this off. You can actually see this really nice stickering there. With again, it's more like nails and screws. Uh, just it's very awesome. I like all the detailing you put in that. As you can see, there's actually Sandman's hand in there, which is kind of like another character in the set, I guess. Even though it's not like a real minifigure, but you can see like the sand hands popping out. You can see sand all around there, which is pretty awesome. And like all of it's just very cool. Um, and you can actually put. No, Tommy McGuire is um, Spider-Man in there when he's like running up the Statue of Liberty and needs the cure to the Sandman. So that's really great. You know, you can like look at it through the other way. I think that looks just awesome. You know, with the hand popping out and everything. So I really do like that attention to detail. And you can actually remove the hand because on the box you can just see they put the hand down here and stuff. So the hand's supposed to be removable, and you can really add that and you like piece of the scalpel thing or just anything you'd like, which I really appreciate. And then this piece just comes on pretty nicely like that, and it's pretty like just really like flex. Like I mean, designed it very well. And I really like that, but that being said, let's take a look at the scalp. Take a look at the scalp thing now, as you can see, it's actually very detailed. You get that bucket there, and you can just recreate such iconic scenes. You know, you can put one of the Spider-Man running there, you know, just have them all together, like Tom holding the box. And you can just put them all over the scalp thing if you'd like, which is just very awesome. And you also got like a camera up here, which I don't think really is a reference to the movie, but it's just kind of a reference to Peter Parker, you know, like photography, like doing photography for the Daily Bugle, which is awesome. You get these generators, you get two of them in the set, which is very confusing, because like, Watching the movie, there's nothing really talking about generators in the final battle. I think they just kind of want to include them to kind of like advertise the new uh, mold they added. As you can see, it's like this new jumper mold, which is also included in the end game set that they released. And it's really nice. Like, as you can see, you get um, a minifigure. You can kind of put them on like 
well, like you can add a jumper piece there and you just they peg into like these um like like brackets there you know you can put it in there and then i have the character jumping so i really like that and these are actually really cool new molds but flipping it around can just continuing as you can see more scalping there's no studs on these ones but you can still place a minifigure if you like as you can see like it's not that bad and here you can actually get a doctor strange portal um zooming out a bit which is pretty cool we'll take a look at that in a second and then flipping it around just continuing there's like an axe there which is pretty cool and um, as you can see, there's just more scalping down there. And it's very nice, I like all the details, how like all of them are kind of like uneven, like one's taller than the other, which is pretty cool. Really like this detail here, as you can see, it's like a web, but you get this piece here, which I believe is supposed to be Sandman's cure, but it could also be any of the other villains from the final battle. So you can have like um, Toby and like give it to his hand. You can throw them in top like right here and be curing Sandman. So I really like that. You can also have like Tom holding it or have Andrew holding it, which I really like. And yeah, it's this awesome little feature there. You can kind of recreate that scene, you know, where they're all like hanging to each other on the top of the build. Like, there's a lot of recreation scenes you can do. And again, just continuing to spin the build around. You get another one, there's clear pieces there. And again, just more studs and stuff. As you can see, you also get a generator there with like the stickering on there, which is pretty cool. And like I was saying, you also get a Doctor Strange portal included up top, as you can see. Again, it's just like those translucent, like circular pieces. You can place your Doctor Strange minifigure on the studs if you'd like. He just kind of sits there, you know, you can put any other character there too. Like if you don't want the Spider-Man jumping through, you can just put them there, even though it's not very accurate. Like it's just still cool to put the, any of the Spider-Man behind the portals. But that, that being said, I'll show you some iconic scenes. You can we have the three Spider-Man talking together where Andrew Garfield says his famous line. Like I want to see the whole. Hey, just joking though, I really like all the detail here and you can just recreate such like iconic scenes, you know, you can have Andrew Garfield fixing Tobey Maguire's back and just have like Tom holding the box and stuff, so I really like all the stuff you can do on the scalping. And here you have the scene where Toby cures Sandman and he has like the cure that is included in the set there and you can just like put him inside like the Statue of Liberty there with the Sandman hand and just have him there kind of like poking out with the, the cure there, so I really like that and it's also a very cool scene. And lastly here, arguably the most iconic scene of the whole movie, all three Spider-Men together on top of the Statue of Liberty. This right here, just seeing this is worth every last penny to me. All three Spider-Men on top of this amazing build. This, this is just so amazing. I never thought we'd actually have this in Lego. Just the minifigures, the build. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I could just wish I could just screenshot this forever. It's so cool. I, worth every last penny. I cannot recommend this set enough. I know I haven't even given my fun over it, but just, I love this so much. Overall, this is an absolutely incredible set. We're just going to describe how much I love this set. It's just so great seeing the three Spider-Man there and all these villains and just all the other characters. It's just so great. And the scalping team, just the shot of the three Spider-Man is just amazing. And, uh, at $110, it is very pricey, and I feel like Lego just stuck that extra $10 at the back just because they knew they could, and people would still buy it just to make that extra 10 bucks. and you just kind of wish that that extra 10 bucks in the price went towards, like, more detailed minifigures, just accurate minifigures, or, like, printing, you know, it just gets kind of annoying, but still, I think it's absolutely worth it. If you love Noi Home, um, it's an absolute must-have, in my opinion. Just putting this on your desk or shelf, anything, you're gonna love it so much. So I highly recommend this set. It's hard to give the set a 10 out of 10, just because there's some inaccuracies in the build and some like minor problems. So I'd give the set honestly a 9 out of 10. It's almost perfect, just again, some inconsistencies and just some inaccuracies. But again, my absolute 9 out of 10 set. I literally could not recommend this set enough. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I have a very special announcement coming up tomorrow, so stay tuned. You're not gonna wanna miss it, it's very big. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have an incredible day. Bye. Thank you.